video we're going to change the timing belt on a 2005 Honda Pilot. We have our new timing belt here and while you're in the area it's always a good idea to change the water pump, tensioner, hydraulic tensioner, and some idler pulleys as well. The timing belt is located on the passenger side of the car behind the serpentine belt. Before you start the process you want to disengage the negative terminal on the battery, pull off all the plastic graphics. With everything securely jacked up we will remove the passenger side wheel. With a few of those little plastic plugs that we removed, now this drops down and we have access to the harmonic balance. This is a specialty tool made specifically for Hondas and Acuras. It slides onto your harmonic balancer, keeping it from moving so the engine won't turn over while you're trying to remove the crank bolt. This bolt is a standard thread, not a reverse thread. And here's upping the ante. This is a much larger torque wrench. We've never had this thing fail. It just breaks all these bolts loose. It's, it's, we actually named it Godzilla for a reason because it's just a beast. No problem, Godzilla always gets the bolts out. There it is, it's amazing. There's not even any thread locker on these bolts and they're so hard to get out. With a 14 millimeter bolt on the tensioner down there, and I have a cheater on here because there's a lot of pressure on that spring, so there's a lot of tension we have to counteract. It's gonna loosen up this drive accessory belt here. And we can take that off. Now we can remove the serpentine belt from the harmonic balancer. Pull off the balancer. The bottom bolts on the timing cover, especially in our case, are extra rusty, so I'm going to start with an extractor because I know they're fragile and they're just going to strip out anyway. These Irwin extractors just work really well, we've had good luck with them. The power steering pump needs to be removed, we don't need to disconnect any hoses, there's just two bolts holding it in place and we can move it out. There's one bolt underneath pulley here that's holding it in and then one bolt right here that I'm going to take off the 12 millimeter and the second bolt on the bottom power steering pump can now be moved out of the way what we're looking for is access and clearance to these timing covers right here that cover up the cams remove the tensioner assembly I'll take off the top bolt on the tensioner Pull off the tensioner assembly. You'll need to pull it out the top and they just barely give you enough room to get it out. Before you can remove the bottom timing cover, there's bolts you need to remove. A smaller 10 millimeter quarter inch drive socket makes it a lot easier. Before the bottom timing cover will come off, we need to remove the top ones. Remove the front timing cover, and there's our first glimpse at the timing belt. You wanna look for oil around here on this timing gear because if there's any oil, there's a chance your crankshaft seal is bad, and if that's bad, the oil can deteriorate the rubber on the timing belt and cause a lot of problems. Now the second timing cover is over here on the rear side of the engine, and we'll pull off the second one. Once the two top ones are removed and the bolts on the bottom cover are removed, it comes off. And there's all the pieces. We're gonna remove this uh, little timing shield just so we don't lose it because it falls out easily. Reinstall the crank bolt and this is going to allow us to get a handle on here so we can spin the engine over and line up all of our timing marks. Before you ever remove the timing belt, we're gonna line up these timing marks just in case anything were to move we know exactly where to put it. We wouldn't have to retime the entire engine. So this timing mark is gonna get lined up up to this timing mark on the casting. It's an arrow, and those two need to be lined up perfectly. Right here on the gear, I put a little bit of chalk on it so it's easier to see. And this is the arrow above the timing gear. Just because those timing marks at the bottom line up doesn't mean that these are gonna be lined up as well. There's a timing mark on this gear that has to line up with this slot. So you might have to rotate it down there a few times for everything to line up. Now I'll spin the engine over just so you can get a better look at the timing marks. And it's always a good rule of thumb to spin the engine, always clockwise. Now at the top gear we have this line marked right in line with this mark. And those are our two timing marks that need to be correct. The other two gears are lined up, but this gear here isn't the timing marks all the way at the bottom. So I'm going to keep spinning it until all of them are lined up. 
If you pulled the spark plugs before you wanted to crank over the engine, it'd be a lot easier because right now you're fighting all the compression of the cylinders, so that's why it'll be stiff. In order to get access to the water pump, we need to remove the motor mount here. So there's a few bolts holding that in. Before we remove the engine mount, we need to support the engine by putting a little bit of support on the oil pan. Just get that tight, but don't push up too much. You wanna have a piece of wood between the jack and the oil pan. You need something to cushion out the load and make it smoother. The two top engine mount bolts are removed with a 14 millimeter socket. There's another 10 millimeter bolt right here mounted to the engine mount. We can now remove the motor mount that is covering up the water pump. This is the third bolt, the last bolt. And here's the water pump pulley with everything disassembled. We now have full access to the belt and then we're gonna be able to replace this and everything along with it. In order to remove the tension on the belt, we need to back off the tensioner. So this piece right here is your hydraulic tensioner. And in order to release the pressure that it's pushing on the belt, Honda has an eyelet right here. It's an M6 1.0 thread. So I have a bolt just like this, thread it in there. And then with a quarter inch drive ratchet, what I'm gonna do is tighten down on this. What that's gonna do is compress the hydraulic tensioner. If I show you on the new parts, it'll be a little bit easier to understand because we're not in the engine. So this is our hydraulic tensioner and this comes out, pushes on this idler pulley and gives the timing belt tension. And then with this bolt, we're threading it through that eyelet and pushing it this way. When this gets pushed, it's compressing that into the tensioner here, spinning it, compressing it, and making everything smaller, which is gonna make the timing belt much looser. Before we really start pulling all the tension off and removing the timing belt, you need to make sure that all of your timing marks are lined up. So the top one on the front camshaft gear here, I have this timing mark marked, and that's lined up with the timing mark on the casting. And then on the rear camshaft, I also have those lined up. You can see on the other side, we have those marks lined up as well. And down below on the crankshaft gear, there's a timing mark on one of the teeth, and then you line that up with the arrow on the casting. I needed to rotate this gear twice before the two timing marks on the top lined up with each other. If you rotate it once, sometimes only one timing mark will line up on the top. It's important that both of the camshafts on top line up with their corresponding timing marks. I'll put a little bit of marking paint on the gear and on the belt. Just so whenever I put the new one on, I'm gonna transfer over these marks and I can be sure it's going on correctly. I'll put three marks on the bottom crankshaft, just so I know I can't get them mixed up, just in case somehow it would line up in another way. Now if you have a thin piece of metal, you can put in the hole once you have it compressed, use that. We have an extra pin here we can set in place and that's gonna hold that whenever we take the tension off. Now there's a lot of tension on this side of the belt, so I'm gonna spin the crank just a little bit so this loose carries over to this side where it's so tight so I can slide it off. Once I get it off the bottom, everywhere else is gonna be pretty easy to remove. See that loosens up on the other side now. Now, yeah, now I can work this off very easily. Once you get it off the bottom crank, everything else really starts to come off easier. Whenever you're taking it off, just be careful not to rub off your paint marks. And out it comes. I'm going to make one starting mark on the new belt that we have here, and then I'm going to count the teeth in between each one of the marks and then mark it out that way. Instead of eyeballing it, you could do both. First, eyeball the marks, but you always wanna double check after counting them because anything could be one tooth off, and it's one tooth off, that's gonna be a big deal and your engine will not run, and probably won't run very well if it does. So we're gonna make sure this is correct. I now have all of the marks transferred over to the new belt. I counted in between each tooth all the way around, and say if this belt was one tooth off or two, two, two teeth off, like size wise, like it was too large for this vehicle or too small, you would, note it, you would know it whenever you're counting between these marks. If you get a different reading than you got on this belt onto the new belt, if something's off, you know that you might have the wrong belt. Always you know, count twice, make sure everything is correct before you would come to that conclusion, but that's a good way to tell. I'll take off the tensioner idler pulley now. 
There it is. Start removing the bolts on the hydraulic tensioner. Pull out the one on this side. There's one exactly like this on the other side. Then the tensioner comes out and also that idler pulley. Here's our old idler and tensioner and our new one. Before you would get rid of this, there's a bushing in here that you need and that pops out real easy. We'll clean this up, put some fresh grease on it and then this pops in right here. Take out the water pump and there's 10 millimeter bolts all around the edge, so remove all of those. A screwdriver can help pry it off. Definitely expect some coolant to come out and take it out the rest of the way. The center idler pulley comes out next. It's common for this bolt to bend, so we're gonna cut off the end of it because you won't be able to get this out with that bent curve right there. Now I just broke this off by wiggling it back and forth. We can now remove the rest. Install the new rubber gasket that comes with your water pump kit. Make sure that the surface around the water pump is really clean. Just take a rag and scrub it down. With everything clean, we can reinstall our new water pump. We're going to torque the water pump bolts to 8.9 foot-pounds. We will reinstall our new idler. The idler pulley is torqued to 33 foot-pounds. We'll put in the new tensioner. The hydraulic tensioner is torqued to 8.9 foot-pounds. We'll put in the hydraulic tensioner idler pulley. This bolt is torqued to 18 foot-pounds. Put in the timing belt, lining up those paint marks. Start by hooking it in on the bottom on your marks and then slide everything into place on top. From the camshaft, it goes down around the water pump. Down here at the crank, I'm going to spin it a little bit counterclockwise because this side of the belt isn't going to be tensioned by the tensioner. So I'm going to take as much slack out of that as I can, which is going to give me more slack on the tensioner side to get it around that pulley. I'm gonna loosen the bolt on the hydraulic tensioner assembly so I have a little bit more slack to pull this out so I can get it up over. I'm gonna loosen the hydraulic tensioner. I'm going to completely remove the bolt. With that tensioner loose, it can swing back and forth, which gives us plenty of room to get it over that idler pulley. Now put that bolt back in place. All those marks are now lined up on this camshaft, the other camshaft, and down on the crankshaft. And the bolts that I had to remove, we're gonna go ahead and retorque. Once you've got everything set up, just pull this pin, and that's gonna give tension to the whole belt. That's a really important step. Now what we need to do is just rotate the whole thing. After spinning it two revolutions, those timing marks still line up, that's good. Now don't expect your paint marks to line up again. Start installing the old motor mount. I like to clean up the parts before I put them back in. And we'll put in the timing covers on the top. This is the second half of the motor mount. We can go ahead and put that in once we have all of our timing covers on. It's definitely tight down in here. The motor mount bolts are torqued to 33 foot-pounds. And the two bolts that go on top to hold the engine in place. The two top motor mount bolts are torqued to 18 foot-pounds. With the motor mount in, we can remove the jack. Put in this small 10 millimeter bolt on the motor mount. Now we'll put all this back together. Now we'll reinstall the serpentine belt tensioner. And don't forget this little spacer between the crank and the harmonic balancer and reinstall the harmonic balancer. Reinstall the crank bolt. The crank bolt is torqued to 47 foot-pounds and then a 60 degree turn. To make it easy, a 60 degree turn is one point of a six point bolt. Now put on the serpentine belt. With the serpentine belt on, we can go ahead and put on the engine graphics and we'll start it up. And it runs like nothing ever happened. 